G'day. Today we're doing a uh, repair. We've got a Mazda 6 2003. It's got the 4 speed, the FN 4AEL transmission in it. Uh, they brought it in on the trailer, no reverse, and it won't go into just flares or slips when it goes into third um, and won't go in the top gear. Now to gain access, I've uh, removed the air filter, um, you can see there, I've removed the battery, and now I'm just going to put a, an engine support here so I can actually um, control how far it drops um, when I take off this carrier here. And there we go, I've just supported the engine there with that bracket. It still hasn't taken up, it's actually sitting on that bottom um, subframe. So I've taken these bolts right out and it's dropped down just to the subframe. I've also put this old medicine uh, bottle. Um, if you want to go and buy some wild strength wild fish oil, it'll fit nicely over that. Now on the Mazdas you've got to uh, lower this subframe. So you've got these little brackets here and there's some main bolts at the front here. So we're going to lower that down and that'll hopefully um, drop the transmission low enough so we can pull that uh, shaft out. Okay, I've just supported the, the back of the subframe and you can see the bolts, I've taken them right out. So now we're going to just lower it down a little bit. Let's see what happens. Remembering that it, it will eventually hang on that uh, engine support up there that I've put, put up. Now I can just sort of loosen this off a little bit, just see how far that will go. Just keep a note on um, all the hoses and everything. That's just loosened up there, so that's probably about as far as it'll go. I'll just tighten that up just so it's got a little bit of tension. Okay, here I've got the pan off. Um, I'm going to take the filter off, undo all these plugs, just taking a note of which coloured solenoids go where. And... Uh, lower that bell body. Taken all the bolts off except for that that one. And make sure you take a note of the accumulators. They're a little bit different. Um, the one on the left hand side is the longer one and the shorter one and the one on the right hand side they're about the same length so you need to take a note, note of that I don't think the, the accumulator pistons are different they're the same so we're just going to let that drain a little bit just so this oil isn't annoying us and the servo cover is under there so we're going to actually just test it to see if it's leaking or not um, but I'm suspecting that the, the bore in the case has been flogged out
Okay, we've just had the selector shaft out. We've removed the, uh, well, to start off with, we vacuum tested um, to see if we're getting vacuum on the top part of the servo piston. Um, we're actually getting quite a good vacuum, so um, we took it off and just checked it, but the bore in the case uh, is not worn at all. So we've put that back together, and what we've actually found is that just around this little port, that one applies the reverse clutch, that one there. Um, and I'll show you on the valve body what's happening. Now what appears to be happening is that just here, you can see the, the pressure mark on that gasket. And right along here, there's quite a bit that's not pressing there. So I'm suspecting that we've got a pressure leak there. Um, so when you're getting the apply out of this port here, um, it's not actually applying or it's leaking away past that gasket. So I don't know if you can see that on the camera. I'm just trying to get the, the light right. So what I'm thinking of doing, you can see that the, the distance between the two bolt holes is quite large. So... I'm thinking of making a little bracket here um, and welding a nut on there and then I can actually press it down with another bolt so it's actually applying pressure to that part there. Um, it just seems to be that the, the distance between those two bolts is too great for it to uh, clamp down enough. Um, so either that or when we I'll pull this valve body apart and just make sure all the valves are nice and free through there um, but what can happen is that the valve body can be a little bit warped and it's not sealing properly there so I'm just starting to shape it there I made a slight bend in it it's the bends probably a little bit too too great um, and also the filters getting in the way of it so I'm just gonna try and put that in there see if it's just flat um, we need this one to be a little bit raised so it can just go straighter straight across there so we're going to flip this around when I get the holes right um, and then hopefully that'll be out of the way of the filter enough now yeah, from the center to center it looks like it's 70 mil so I'm just going to um, make, make a punch mark here so I can drill a hole so it's 70 mil there we go there's a the little bracket I've made and I'm, I've just got to round this off just so it doesn't dig into that or I could just make a little cup that goes in on that so it doesn't damage the valve body the idea is, is when I bolt this down here and here and I can just tension this up and I'll put a little nut on it as well so I can lock it in place so it doesn't undo and then that'll hopefully press a little bit in between those two bolts so we won't lose that pressure there okay I'm just gonna go through the valve body and we're just gonna pull it apart open it up and just make sure all those valves are operating okay valve body or lower section there's a little accumulator there and you've got these little guide sleeves 
So just put them aside. And I'll just drain that off. Okay. Now I'm just gonna run the st run that over the stone. Just make sure it's nice and flat. Okay. You can see there were a few little high spots here and there over here. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but definitely worth uh, running it nice and flat over a stone just to get it nice and even. So I've gone through, thoroughly flushed it out, leveled that up. This part's basically finished. Um, if you want to um, just examine how we um, flushed out the solenoids, we just flush them out, um, test them, make sure they're within specs, um, that they're not too high or too low resistance. Ideally, you should warm them up. Um, and test them as well because they do sometimes fail when when they're warmed up so I'll leave that um, up to your discretion um, I'll check these later and see how we go um, now we're going to move on to the valve body part okay I've ran the stone over it and you can see the stone has been rubbing quite quite heavily through the middle part there it just means that this this part's been higher here um, it hasn't touched very much around the edges here um, but around this this area here so it just means that this is a little bit warped so anyway it's a good idea to face that so it is flat so now we're going to just pop the valves out and just make sure they're travelling nice and freely in there. One is a bit gummed up. gummed up too. They're not actually stuck in there, they're just not shuttling through. So now I'll just give that another clean, a wash and a blowout and then we'll work, uh, we'll do the same with the valves, give them a clean. Um, this this valve here, the dark one, it's actually an aluminium valve um, that's been anodized. It's got this slippery coating on it. Um, so you visually inspect to see if there's there any wear, wear marks on it. Um, it doesn't appear to have many. Um, there are a few here, very hard to see. But you can just see very faint um, lines in that direction like that. So that's how it would have been wearing out. Okay, I've thoroughly cleaned them out, 
um, flushed it out, blown it out, flushed it out, blown it out a couple of times with the clean solvent. I've cleaned up the valves. So we're going to start off with this valve, the, the steel one, and that's actually the solenoid pressure regulator valve. So I'm going to try it in the bore there, and you can see that shuttling through quite nicely. That one's okay. And this other valve, the longer one, that's the low and reverse valve. So that could have something to do with what we've got a bit of trouble with the reverse. So you can see that one's sort of still. They are a lighter valve, so they're not going to shuttle through as easily, but they still should have. A nice free movement there. So that one just needs a little bit more work. We're going to get a rubber tube and just work it through while I've, I'm flushing it through with the solvent. Now I've just cleaned and blown it out and worked it through with the solvent. Uh, I did actually notice there were quite fine little aluminium flecks coming out still. So they, they were obviously stuck in that bore there. So I've just worked that through like that. And you can see that's you can see it's just shuttling quite nice and easy now. Alright. We can put that one back together. And the solenoid pressure regulator. Don't mix the springs up. Um, the longer spring goes on the on the end which is the solenoid pressure regulator and the shorter one goes there but sometimes it's a good idea to just do valves one by one anyway so put it in you basically need a screwdriver that's the width of the spring and narrow enough uh, for that little end plate to slide over Just push that down like so and just slide that in. You can see that. There you go. And do the same with that one. Push the spring down. There we go. That part's ready to go. Now, if you've got a vacuum tester, you can also check um, to make sure that these bores aren't um, leaking there. Basically, it just consists of a little plastic um, pad, and you just test in the various ports just to make sure it's not leaking. So you can go on each one if you like, or on the main parts. Okay, I've just cleaned and washed this. I've ran the stone over it, and you can see the the shiny bits are where the, the higher bits were, um, especially around where the, the accumulators are. Uh, they're the ones that go into the into the case. Um, so now I'm going to just slowly pull pull these apart. Um, by the looks of it. Um, I can't really, I've just visually examined the valves to see if there's any wear marks on the, on the valves. I can't see anything like that. So we'll go through and just clean all this up, make sure everything's shuttling nicely. And then uh, we may even test, uh, at least test the pressure regulator um, solenoid with the vacuum. Okay, we'll start off with the solenoid shift valve and I've got a very very light spring and again that that's a little bit gummed up in there it's not stuck but it's just gummed up Just visually inspect to see if there's any wear marks in it. 
and there are a few little light grooves here but um, it hasn't gone through the anodized coating so they look all right and I'll take out this the main pressure regulator valve In there. Just have to give it a tap on the other bench. The tapping's not hasn't got it out, got that plug out, so I'm just gonna just keep tapping it like this until it it should just eventually pop out itself. Just be careful when it does it, you don't lose all your valves. Well, stuck it in. Important to be patient with these. If you if you damage that surface, um, yeah, it won't. That, sometimes those plugs are there to seal it. And also, if you can, if you get enough of it in there, if you can just sort of rotate it while you're tapping it, um, there, there's probably a little step in there that's just hooking onto the because there is a little groove there that where the little retainer sits. So it's probably just got a little slight burr on it or something like that. So we'll just keep working on that until we can get the plug out. I'm still working on this regulator valve. I've ended up putting that little plug on the opposite side just so there's more spring tension there and then I can just tap this a little bit more until it, it, it has come out a fair way now and then we just, just keep tapping it until it until it comes out itself. You might be tempted to, to grab it with a pair of pliers and just reef it out, but you'll end up damaging that um, the outside surface. So sometimes it's important because it acts as a plug. And there we go. Finally. There she blows. So I haven't, I haven't actually grabbed it with the pliers or anything like that. So I haven't damaged any of that surface, and it's a nice precision fit. All right. So now we take out that regulator valve. And we just take, make a note that that is a lot stronger than the other valve, uh, other spring, just in case you end up getting them mixed up. And there's the regulator valve. So I'm just going to wash out um, those two. Uh, bores there. Um, this one here, you can act, I can actually see a little bit of rubbish in there. So we'll just wash it, flush it, wash it, um, blow it out, and then see how we go. Okay, I've washed it all out. Now we're just going to try it. Let's 
put it in backwards. I won't even go in backwards, it's very precision fit. I'll just grab a rubber tube and then I can just work it through the way it's supposed to go. Now it actually is quite, it is free, but there are spots on it that are sort of getting stuck somewhere. So I'm going to have to just make sure that's nice and free. So it's getting getting stuck there. It doesn't travel that much anyway, but it's just a good idea to, to work out those uh, little burrs that it may have in there. Okay, now we're going to do a, um, a wear test on that bore. Um, you can test these with a vacuum tester, but um, because I do this for the, for the average uh, repair mechanic um, or backyarder, um, what you can do also to see if the bore is worn is basically position the valve so it's closed the port right off and just fill it up with solvent and you, you'll soon see if it's leaking if it's just slowly leaking away that, that's not too bad I don't know if you can see that but um, it all looks alright this one here you know, sometimes it won't matter um, if you, even if you seal it um, because the the fluid will leak out of these little ports here. But basically, that's just good for an indication to see if um, if there is any wear in there. If the valve is sealing in there and it, it doesn't just completely drain away, it means it's not too bad. Um, another thing to check is if if there are any wear marks on the valve. Um, these are nicely. Uh, coated with the anodized material, so in this instance it doesn't look too bad. There we go, that's shuttling through nicely there. So we can put those two valves back together. And the spring. And the plug. Again, we get the screwdriver. Okay. Now we've got these these four valves to do. So we've got the starting up here. We've got the torque converter clutch relief valve, the torque converter control valve the clutch control valve and the 3-4 clutch um, or shift valve. So we'll take two out at a time. We'll start over here with the torque converter. Just gummed up like the other ones. Not stuck, just gummed up. and the torque converter control solenoid. There we go. And again to note, 
that the spring on the end one, which is the relief valve, um, is the stronger out of the two, just in case you mix them up. Okay, I've just worked that one out. Now if you want again to test if it's leaking, you can just pour solvent in here and see if it leaks away, or any one of these other ports. So, alternatively you can use a vacuum tester, where you just press it on this one port. So we're just going to go through and clean them all up. And then we'll and we've got the torque converter clutch control valve, and that one's shuttling through beautifully. screwdriver's a little bit too wide there so I can either grind those little ends off or find a small screwdriver. And again they're just gummed up, they're not sticking or anything. And they all look pretty good, they, they don't seem pretty very worn at all, well, not worn at all. Okay, so we'll just clean up those bores and those solenoids, make sure they're shuttling nice and freely, and the job's done, we can put it back together. Okay, nicely cleaned. They both look good. Okay, now we can start putting it back together. And I've just put the drill under here just to support that, that end until I get the rest of it on. Don't forget your little guide pins. Just line up that um, that little hole there with the little guide there. There we go. Now we can put all the bolts back in. Actually, I forgot the accumulator. I just forgot to put the, uh, that's the shift solenoid C accumulator. So, put that in there.
Always good to have a clear bench so you can see if you do forget something like that sometimes. Otherwise I would have been in a bit of bother. Okay, we've put them all, tightened them all up just by hand, and now we're going to tension them up to an 80 inch pound, which is about 9 Newton metre. Fill them up a little bit more and then we'll just tighten them up. I'm just trying to get this bolted down as evenly as possible. <laughs> 